This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. As we continue our conversation uh, with our guest, Kianga Yamata-Taylor, assistant professor of African American studies at Princeton University, out with a new book, How We Get Free. I'm sorry, because I had the sense from your sigh, uh, Kianga, you just heard that Julius Lester died. Yeah, I'm I sorry no to break that to you. It's terrible. Terrible news. Um, How We Get Free, your book. Um, if you could talk about who the Combahee River Collective is, and we'll do a post show after this because we have to go longer uh, than we have time for. Uh, but the whole issue of this whim radical women's collective um, really coining the term identity politics, taking on the issue of intersectionality, and this was 40 years ago. So the the Combahee River Collective uh, was a group of black radical feminists that formed in 1974 that considered themselves to be a left split um, from a uh, organization called the National Black Feminist Organization, which I think they would characterize as uh, certainly to the left of mainstream um, uh, white feminism, uh, feminist organizations, um, but still uh, not far enough to the left in terms of the Combahee's um, focus on linking women's oppression uh, to capitalism um, and linking the uh, black women's oppression to capitalism, but also, more importantly, um, I think, or of equal importance, is seeing that uh, the liberation of black women uh, was connected to um, a radical uh, uh, reconstruction of American society. Um, and so the, the group formed in, in 1974 um, and really was active around issues of uh, abortion rights, reproductive freedom, including um, campaigning against sterilization, um, taking up the, the, the struggle against domestic violence um, and against violence against women. They were based in Boston. Um, and during this time, uh, there was really a, a, a spate of violent attacks against black women. Um, black women were being killed um, in cases that were going unresolved. Um, and this really shaped the political world that they were active in. In 1977, uh, they produced a, uh, a document that is really um, foundational um, in the, you know, the, the politics of radical black feminism, um, called the Combahee River Collective Statement, uh, which really both theorized aspects of black women's oppression, um, but also connected that to strategies that they believed would be central to ending it, um, both in terms of uh, how to link the struggle, um, the struggles that black women faced to uh, the struggles of other oppressed people, which they called coalition building, um, but also uh, the need to have uh, transformative, um, revolutionary, radical politics. Um, and so I think that, you know, this is the 40th anniversary. Uh, or last year, 2017, was the, was the 40th anniversary of the publication um, of that uh, of the statement. And part of my motivation for uh, doing this book, which is a republication of the statement itself, um, and interviews with the the three authors um, of the statement, was to really try to introduce both the, the politics um, and the practice, and really the lives and experiences of, of these women uh, to a new generation of activists. We just have 20 seconds, but. What would you say their message is to them today? I think their their message uh, for them today is that it's not enough just to identify the ways that black women um, are oppressed, but that it is important to uh, synthesize that analysis with a plan of action. It is important to act, because that is the only way that black women will get free. I want to thank you so much for being with us. And we're going to do part two of this discussion. Post it online at democracynow.org. Uh, we'll be broadcasting from the Sundance Film Festival following the documentary track all week next week. Kianga Yamata Taylor, assistant professor of African American Studies at Princeton University, her new book, How We Get Free. I'm Amy Goodman. Happy birthday, Edith Penty. Thanks.